How did an 18th century musician used to think? What was his cognitive process? And what were his musical paradigms? The mindset of an 18th century musician is totally different from the one we have today. The reason lies in the fact that they were taught three fundaments from when they were children. Three important fundaments we must know, study and practice if we want to better understand, play and compose in a coherent style. So which were the three fundaments of an 18th century musician? Solmization solfeggio, basso continuo harmony and partimento. Solmization solfeggio for the horizontal melodic dimension, basso continuo harmony for the vertical harmonic dimension and partimento for the rhetorical and stylistic disposition of the musical speech. Let's discover now how is the mind of an 18th century musician by analyzing Haydn's Sonata No. 2 in B-flat major. And watch this video up to the end because there is a special gift for you. First of all, let's listen to this sonata with Lazarus singing the melody with solfeggio. Oh 
This sonata starts with a common opening gambit in the gallant style, Do, Mi, Sol, over a bass on degree 1. The Sol features a little inflection on Fa with a triplet. The harmony stays on B flat major, 3 5 chord. Do, mi, sol, pa, sol, pa, sol. After the opening Do, Mi, Sol, the solfeggio pattern La, Sol, Fa, Mi appears two times connected with a Mi, Fa, Sol in the middle. Sol is repeated twice, so the pattern becomes La, Sol, Sol, Fa, Mi. In addition, La is introduced by a Fa on the previous upbeat. On La, Sol, the bass stays still on degree 1, alternating 3-5, 4-6 and 3-5 chords. On Sol Fa Mi, the bass features a simple cadence, valorizing the triplet, an important figure in this sonata. Then a Fa Super La, that is A flat in B flat major, suddenly introduces an ascending scale in parallel thirds from degree 4 to 1 in the bass concluding with the cantus half cadence with the 4-6 appoggiatura on degree 5. As you can see, the Fa Super La is an unprepared dominant 7th chord, and this is a so common element in the gallant style. The new phrase starts exactly as the previous one, with the Fa Super La, the same scale in parallel thirds follows, but this time with a different figuration, octave leaps in the bass and appoggiaturas and portamenti in the melody. In addition, this time the ascending scale continues after the high one in the bass up to the 3, and then the two melodies feature a half converging cadence to degree 5. The converging cadence is a cadence where the degree 4 in the bass, Fa, turns chromatically into Mi, resolving to the new upper Fa and the melody, moving by contrary motion, makes converging the cadence from a diminished fifth to a major third. Thanks to the previous converging cadence, the new phrase is definitively in F major, the key on degree 5 of B flat major. Now an ascending Faubourdon starts from A Mi in the bass up to D La. The Faubourdon is a succession of 3-6 chords. At the same time a high triplet works as a pedal on F Fa, because we are in F major we must think the E as Mi, therefore natural. D La thanks to the flat becomes Fa. And on this flatted 6th, shifting to F minor, Haydn writes a Phrygian cadence repeated two times. The Phrygian cadence is based on the semitone Fa Mi in the bass. The role of the Phrygian cadence is to feature a half cadence on degree 5. This passage from F major to F minor is really common in gallant style. It's called mutatio toni, in Latin, change of the tone, that is, the mode, from F with ut re mi, which is major, to F with Re Mi Fa, which is minor. Over the Phrygian cadence the melody sings Fa Sol Fa Mi, where Fa is the flatted La of the hexachord based in Ce Ut, Ce Ut, De Re, E Mi, Fe Fa, Ge Sol, A La. At this point a new long phrase starts. The first two times the melody sings Fa Mi Re Do Re with a gallant C sharp appoggiatura we think as Mi, Fa, but we sing as Re because it doesn't make any modulation. It's only an embellishment and because it is an appoggiatura it takes the name of the following note. In the meanwhile the bass feature Mi Fa on degree 3 and 4 of F major. The third time the bass starts featuring a cadence to F on G Re, degree 2 of F major. 
the melody features the same line, this time continuing the descent Fa, Mi, La, Sol, Fa, Mi. As you can see, in this point we have a double chromaticism, where Fa against Mi becomes Mi against Fa. It sounds like if Haydn is about to modulate to C major, thanks to the B natural, but suddenly, with this double chromaticism, he evades the modulation, making the melody return to F. This cadence is a simple cadence with chromaticism. After that, a compound cadence is repeated two times with the middle voice featuring the clausola cantizans fa, mi, fa. The compound cadence is a cadence with a dissonance, this case over a 3, 4, 5, 1 bass. Actually, this cadence is presented a third time, but preceded by an indugio. The indugio is a gallant schema consisting of lingering, in Italian indugiare, on the degree 4 of a cadence with a 3-6 harmony over it. Other idiomatical aspects of the indugio are the arpeggiating melody and the presence of the chromatic neighbor tones or appoggiaturas. <laughs> After the three times repeated cadence, we arrive to the conclusion of the first part with two more patterns. The first one is the Sol, Fa, Mi. We can see the paired Sol, Fa, Mi in the middle voice, Ce, Sol, Be, Fa, Be, Fa, A, Mi. Paired means that the Sol, Fa, Mi is spread into two dyads, Sol, Fa, Fa, Mi. Below the Sol Fa Mi, the bass is singing La Sol Fa Mi Sol Fa. The Sol Fa Mi is repeated three times and followed by the compound cadence we met before. And now, after the real final cadence, a double quiescenza takes place a long bass on degree 1, a melody singing the first time Do, Re, Mi, Fa and the second time a little variation Do, Fa, Re, Sol, Mi, Fa, with a conclusive fall in the bass and repetition in the melody. The interaction between the bass, the melody and the middle voice Mi, Fa, Re, Mi creates a succession of 3, 5, 4, 6 and 2, 4, 7 chords. And this was the first part, let's come now to the second one. The second part of this sonata opens with the opening gambit Do Mi Sol in F major. Something new happens now. We have two times the solfeggio pattern La Sol Sol Fa Mi following the opening gambit as at the beginning of part 1. The difference is that this time the first La Sol Sol Fa Mi is in F major, then through a passo indietro, back step, a pattern consisting of a succession of 4-3 that takes us back to B flat major, the second La Sol Sol Fa Mi is in B flat major. The ending of the La Sol Sol Fa Mi in B flat major, so the Mi, is the starting point of a monte. The monte is a gallant schema consisting of a repetition, in this case three times, of a 5-1 bass, every time a step higher. The first and the second monte are in E flat major and in F major. Here the bass sings Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, Mi, Fa and the melody sings Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Fa, La where the penultimate Fa is a Fa super La. The third time the monte is in minor, G minor. For this reason syllables change due to the minor mode. The bass sings Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Fa, Sol and the melody Fa, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, Fa. Then a sequence called 
tied bass, where the bass is tied alternating 2-4-6 chord and 3-6 chord, takes us back to B flat major. The melody sing the standing scale florid with anticipations. After the sequence we meet another monte, also this time passing through the same keys, E flat major, F major and G minor. The melody features the fall from the high two, typical element of the gallant style. Sol sol fa mi, sol sol fa mi, la la sol fa. The last stage of the monte in G minor is followed by two cadworth cadences in G minor. The main characteristic of the cadworth cadence is the presence of a descending melodic scale, usually from 8 to 1, over a bass 4, 5, 1, that in minor mode, using solfeggio syllables, always is Sol, La, Re. After the cadence in G minor that confirms the new key, a fonte takes us back to B flat major. This fonte is made up with the three elements of the Fenaroli schema: a bass 7 1 2 3, a counter melody 5 4 3 1 7 1, and a long pedal 5 that is La in minor and Sol in major. Remember that the fonte is always minor plus major a step lower. After the fonte we meet the scale in parallel third starting with the fa super la we already met in the first part of this sonata concluding with the converging cadence The converging cadence prepares the main opening gambit do mi sol in B flat major Notice how the solfeggio pattern La Sol Sol Fa Mi that follows Do Mi Sol is preserved in its syllables, but the notes actually change due to the change of the hexachord, from the hexachord in B Fa Ut to the hexachord in E Fa Ut. This new phrase is concluded by another converging cadence. Notice that what happens now from bar 110, so the Faubourdon, the Frigian cadence, the Fa Mi Re Do Re, the chromatic cadence, the two compound cadences with the third one preceded by the Indugio, another compound cadence, the three Sol Fa Mi, the final double crescenza and the concluding repetition of the chord on degree 1 are the exact transposition to the lower fifth B flat major of what we had from bar 23 up to the end of the first part that was in F major. For this reason in this part solfeggio, patterns and harmony don't change, they only are transposed. <laughs> Well, now you can get your gift only a few words before. During the analysis of this sonata, we have been talking about chromaticism, fa super la, hexachords, letters, syllables, and many other things that are elements that play a key role in 18th century music. As I said at the beginning of this video, 
all these elements can be classified in three main categories, like the three musical halos to master early music. Solmization solfeggio, basso continuo harmony and partimento. And only if we are aware of the importance of each one of these three aspects and that they are not separate things, but all of them together converge to only one practice, we can aspire to a higher musical knowledge and be a step above all those who have studied or are studying music in the traditional way. For that, studying, knowing and practicing these three skills raises our standard in playing, composing and improvising. Today I want to take this opportunity to invite you to delve into solmization if you haven't done it yet, which is the basic of 18th century solfeggio. In fact, solmization helps you to develop a greater awareness of melodic and stylistic patterns and how these partners blend harmoniously into a single musical vial, the one that characterizes the life and the work of all the numerous musicians from the Renaissance up to the 19th century. A gradual, orderly and effective method is necessary in learning solmization. And this is what you have in Fa Mi et Mi Fa as Tota Music, a gradual and orderly path in which I lead you by hand in discovering solmization to become able to feel, read and think music as an ancient musician. And then you too will be able to read the melodies of your favorite compositions with solfeggio, as Lazarus did, thanks to this method. Discover all the other things you can get access to from the link here in the description. In the same description you can download for free the analysis of this sonata, the same you saw in the video in the Patreon link and this way get your special gift. Again, a special big thanks to Lazarus for giving us his beautiful voice in this collaboration. A warm greeting and I'll wait for you in the next video or if you can't wait in your first stage of Fami et Mi Fa Estota Musica. Bye!